Well, hello. I'd like to welcome you to my impressions of, wow, what an amazing case on that pen. <laughs> this is a Rex pen. I, one of the problems I have when I, with the pens I like is I can't always get model numbers or years of production or much of any information. Uh, this is a Croatian pen from the famous Toes factory in Zagreb, Croatia. Uh, probably not made when it was known as Croatia, probably made when it was part of uh, uh, Yugoslavia, but in any case, pen I've been looking forward to. And when it arrived, it arrived in this rather nice case. So leather case, or pleather possibly. Uh, I was kind of hoping there'd be some branding there, but I guess not. And to my surprise, I feel like this may be unused stock or new old stock or whatever they call it these days. But this is also reminding me a lot, and I don't remember the model number, of there's a certain Senator pen that I have had the chance to buy and said, oh, no, maybe not. And then always regretted it afterwards. Just that enormous ink window is what makes me think of that senator pen and that is a goat so once again one of those it's one of those bach nibs that i like and i've seen that feed on a number of pens that i've owned so I am extremely curious to ink it up and see how it writes. But I feel like it needs to do a glamour shot first. Of course, the reason I do these glamour shots is for the thumbnails, because I don't do credits with first impressions. So I was torn... I was torn what ink to put in this pen. Green pen, dark green pen... Uh, I thought about, you know, one of my dark greens, but then I thought, I have several green samples floating around. Uh, thought about that one for about five seconds and then said, oh, wait, it's got stuff. So, we'll save that for a pen that is easier to wash out. So, I'm really down to, do I want to do Sherwood green or Spearmint? I did bring down a bottle of this also, but then I thought, no, let's use one of these samples that you bought. So, I guess I'm leaning towards Spearmint. I'm not smelling any Spearmint, but that's another story. Now, uh, of course... This is not easy to do one-handed, especially since I'm trying to film the process for you. Actually, that did pretty well for one fill, but we'll do three fills just to be sure. Not bubbling, but uh, I guess I'm not expecting any bubbling in a sample bottle like this. Uh, these sample bottles are actually somewhat difficult to fill from and to get a full fill just because of their size. So we'll discreetly clean off the nib and such off screen. So I'd say I got a pretty decent fill on that. And certainly enough ink left over to play with in the future. So. We'll throw it back in and perhaps another pen will use it. Meanwhile, I want to get to this beautiful nib. Okay, the ink is a lot more uh, bright green than I expected. Maybe I shouldn't have been surprised, but I... I just didn't expect it to be quite that bright. But whatever, it's an attractive color. Um, maybe a little too cartoonish for my taste, but who cares? Uh, there is absolutely, as I'm looking at this pen, no branding on it other than that Bach nib. I see nothing on the clip. 
I see nothing on the cap ring. There is no, no, no branding. So I will say that's a, a nice enough green color, but uh, more on the garish, more well, more on the cartoon side than anything. Of course, when you saw the nib, you expected some of this. I don't want to push it any further than that, but I think you've got the idea what this nib can do as far as wetness and flow. No trouble keeping up. The smear test. No pressure. Very wet pen. And reverse writing. Uh, a lot like other Bach nibs. A little scratchy, but not bad. And of course, there is the famous Pierre Gustafson test, where I do a line of continuous writing and see how the pen keeps up. But I've got high hopes here. Um, it had a little trouble there, but I almost feel like I rotated it out of alignment. And even if I did, it caught back up brilliantly. So, very impressive. So, perhaps not wet noodle flex, but hardly a dry spaghetti noodle either. If you're allowed to call them that. So, I'm impressed with this pen, but uh, once I saw that it had a Bach nib, I was pretty sure I would be. Uh, these vintage Bach nibs are just wonderful, and it made me think to myself, why can't Bach do that now? Uh, so, just all in all, very nice pen. Um, it, it has that understated look I like. I think the large ink window is unique. Uh, one thing I always wonder about, hey, no effort to that at all. So this could easily be a pocket pen, and honestly, a Bach, these Bach nibs are good enough that they could serve as a daily writer if I wanted to. Uh, just all in all, quite impressed with this pen. So uh, hopefully the day will come that I'll figure out the model and when it was made. Uh, all I know for sure, because the seller says so, I don't even know this because it's on the pen, is that it's a Rex pen, which puts it at the from the Toes factory in... Uh, Zagreb, Croatia. So uh, the nib gives me further clue that it's from uh, probably before the 70s. So I uh, hope that was interesting and useful. And I just want you to remember that when I do a first impression, it is exactly that. It is not researched. Uh, I don't have a lot of information other than what I already know. And the only handling I've done with the pen is cleaning it because it's vintage. And now, as you see, handling it and writing with it here. So, my impressions may change as I learn and grow with the pet. So, I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.